I'm Jason Stein. I'm from University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. And I am a part of the Enigma Genetics Working Groups, where I'm a co-lead, and also the Enigma Evolution Working Group. The goal of that working group is to try to identify how genetic variation influencing human brain structure has been selected for or against in the population. What does that mean? So um, genetic variants appear in the population as new mutations. Um, and if those mutations are beneficial, they can increase in frequency in the population. That means that more people who have those genetic variants um, have children and more of those people have children. Um, they can also be selected against if they're, not, um, if they're not beneficial. So that means that those people who have those genetic variants um, are not able to have children or, or not, those children don't, don't thrive. Evolution, this, this idea of selection, um, can lead to new traits and lead to new species. Humans have separated from apes over the last uh, millions of years and over the last few hundred thousands of years we uh, are, have become anatomically modern humans. So anatomically modern humans are what we all are today. There's only one sort of human uh, in the world today, which is the anatomically modern human. What we can see through looking at fossil evidence is that um, human skull size, the human cranial capacity has, has greatly increased from the last 200,000 years um, and then up until around 50,000 years ago. After 50,000 years, there's an interesting decrease in human cranial capacity, but not as, as, as large. Maybe over the past 100 years, there's been some slight changes in different populations in the, in the size of the brain. So all of those different time periods of human evolution are, um, have, are probably associated with new human abilities. Um, and uh, those abilities are, are what make us human, right? So that they give us the ability to, to use language, um, to think complex thoughts, um, and so if we can identify how genetics have changed across those time periods to influence the size and the shape of the human brain, we may be able to understand how that changes in the genome led to the complex behaviors and the complex abilities that we as humans have today. There have been other types of hominids that have, that have happened sort of in the, in the development of humans. And one of those are called Neanderthals. Um, and uh, this is a group of hominids that actually um, separated, so they're different from humans, but interbred with humans around, um, it's not around like 50,000 years ago. Interestingly, there's still a relic of the DNA of, of Neanderthals still in human, anatomically modern human DNA uh, today in Europeans and in Asians. So what we can try to do is to see if that relic um, influences the structure of the human brain because we know the regions of the genome that now influence the structure of the human brain. So if that's true, that, that, could, uh, that could mean that some of the way that our brain structure is, is that, our, that our brain is structured, some of the way that our brain is formed was actually derived from these, um, these regions of the genome that were inherited from Neanderthals. And we'll see if that is true. The Enigma Evolution Group seeks to tie those genetic variants associated with gross brain structure um, two uh, regions of the genome that we know have been selected for or against. There's four basically lead sites that are participating in the Enigma Evolution Working Group. Um, those, uh, one of those is at the Max Planck Institute um, in the Netherlands. One of them is at UC Irvine. One's at UNC Chapel Hill. And the other is at Yale University. What we seek to do is to use that data um, from, from the Enigma Consortium, the genetics working group, to, to sort of combine that data with, with this data. If you want to join the Enigma Evolution Working Group, again, we're very excited to have people with all kinds of ideas about the types of analyses we can do with these um, evolutionary questions. Um, so if you want to get involved with that, again, just go on the Enigma website and fill out the form and say you're interested in Enigma Evolution and we can get you signed up.